for our second edition of Fly of the Month, we've decided to do a fly that hopefully is timely for your fishing as well. The early black stone fly is prevalent in many river systems around the country and as this fly matures through the winter into the spring when it's about to hatch, fish get a better look at it. This pattern is a little more difficult, but I think if you take the time to tie the dozen and master the steps of the legging particularly, you'll find it's, it's fairly simple and you'll be really good at it at the end of it. Um, and you should be able to fish them when you're done here and enjoy catching some nice trout on them. Hope you enjoy. I'm going to start by attaching the thread. You can go right up behind the eye. Bring it back to right where the bend starts and we're going to go ahead and clip our tag off. Next step is going to be select two and we're going to actually count these on this one because these are pretty durable fibers on their own and um, adding a big bunch doesn't make a lot of sense. So we're going to get those tips evened up like so and then tie in right at that tail end. Again we can um, adjust the tails a little bit, get them, to, they're not real short tails on this early winter stone but uh, they're not super long either so take the thread up to to build that body with an even proportion. We're gonna, we don't have to go all the way to the eye, but we're going to bring it up to the front there, clip off the excess. Now we're going to tie in the midge tubing, the brown midge tubing. This, because it's a bigger fly and we can kind of need some of the bulk, we're going to go ahead and just lash it down and I'm going to stretch. You don't have to stretch it real tight, but stretch it a little bit to keep it nice and uniform. We're going to bring that back, keep checking to see if we're back at those tails where they were tied in. And that looks good there, and we're going to bring it up. And we're going to build a little bit of a taper here. Um, the bodies on these are pretty thin, but, you know, it'll go from thin to a little fatter. It doesn't have to be tapered all the way up, but it does have a little taper, so I'm going to bring this up and build some of the body. Get a little thickness there. I'm not going to go all the way back because I want that taper to build. There we go. Bring it up to where the thorax is and then where the thorax will be and stop there. I'm going to wrap midge tubing one after the other. You don't have to stretch it real tight because you want the body to be fairly... Again, this is not a really robust stonefly as stoneflies go, but it does. it's not ultra thin either, so we're going to kind of keep it. If you stretch real far, you'll get that body to where it's almost too thin. Bring that up to about, about two-thirds of the way up the shank. Lift it up, tie off. A couple securing wraps, and then you can bring some on this side. Clip that off. Okay, and if you want to manicure those tails, they'll you know go wherever they want really, but you know, if you want it to just look nice as you're tying it, you can get those tails split. for fun. Now we're going to take some of the amber colored dubbing. We're just going to take a little bit of that off. We're going to dub just a teeny bit here. What this is going to do is um, create a, a little bit of a stop for the legs to hold them out on these back legs. They're going to want to slick along the body of the uh, fly if we don't have a little bit, just a little button there of dubbing. We're going to let the, the thread rest just right on the front side of that little dubbing ball. This will make sense in a second here. Take two pheasant tail fibers, make sure they're uh, matched up again, nice and even. We're going to lay those right on top of the right on top of the hook, make a couple loose wraps. You don't have to be real close to the dubbing ball, we're going to advance the thread towards the dubbing ball as we get those situated. So we're going to, right here, make sure those legs are on both sides. Get them adjusted for length. You don't have to worry about them too much right now. Make sure they're just not too long. They should be a little shorter than the length of the body. There's that. So we're going to go ahead and hold them to the sides, kind of slick them down, and we're going to advance our thread to where we get right up to that dubbing ball we had in there. 
sure you hold those packs. That dubbing ball acts as a spreader for those um, legs so it keeps them out as much as possible because when, when these sweat flies are swimming in the water column they stick them out real far and clumsy. Go ahead and clip those off. I'm going to dub another portion of the thorax. When you're dubbing this thorax it does not need to be ultra um, tight because it, if it picks out a little bit it will look like gills, the gills of the uh, stonefly nymph underneath the thorax. So I'm dub up that body there, or that thorax. Alright, now we're gonna go ahead and make a few clips. I've already done this ahead of time, but you just make small shallow clips in that um, body stretch to give it a little bit of a V. We're gonna lay that right on the top. Hold it down, a few loose wraps, sometimes that, the uh, body stretch will pull on the sides, it just likes to wander, just make sure that gets um, captured and is on the top, you want it to be right on top of the fly. I'm going to adjust it a little bit, make it a little shorter. Okay. I'm going to wrap up, keeping that fly on the, or the uh, wing case on the top. Wrap up to that dubbing so we're real tight against that thorax we made. And if it slides a little you might need to make some minor adjustments. Then eventually you get that wing case right on the top there. You can see it. And we're gonna make some wraps towards the eye, just a two or three wraps, get that lash down nice and tight so we get it once we have it in position. Then we're gonna pull this body stretch back and make some wraps to secure it. We're gonna wrap all the way till we get to where that this uh, tying area of the wing case was right there. So we, we don't want to have a thread gap in between that. So we're going to wrap back until we get to that point. And there we go. So we have the wing case coming out. I'm going to make a few more wraps there. There we go. We can leave that trailing off the back. I'm going to tie in another set of legs. Two more. Two more um, pheasant tail fibers. And make sure they're matched up, tips nice and even. We're going to lay those right on the top. A few, just one wrap there, a couple wraps. I got the length on those pretty good right off the bat. I don't, shouldn't have to adjust them. Just make sure they're kind of split right down the, so they're off to either side of the uh, shank like that. Okay, make a couple wraps to make sure they're secure. Go ahead and clip the uh, excess. Now we're going to dub a little more thorax. It's about the same amount we t dubbed on the, se the second one we did there. Maybe slightly less. But Alright, again, fairly loose dubbing. We want to make sure as we dub this part that it looks pretty solid on the belly where the, th you know, you want to dub back enough to where those kind of look together. You, know, you can also, you can have a real easy gap there if you're not careful. A couple wraps and put the thread right in front of, right in front of where the dubbing stops, right in there. We're going to take two more legs. So this is third set of and take two of those, make sure they're evened up. Put them right on top. A couple wraps. Just for length. Get them secure. Alright, so we've got three sets there. You can see them all. I'm going to go ahead and clip that excess off there. And this point we're going to pull, pick up that um, second wing case and make sure you split those. If you stroke back the pheasant tail um, legs, that will help you keep them away from the um, getting captured and caught up in the tying thread. Make that wrap. Nice stretch there, get the legs. 
There's the second part of the wing case there. We're going to make just a two or three wraps there, right, to lash this down. And we're going to pick it up, put our thread in front of it again. We're going to just do a little teeny bit of dubbing here, just to, for the under the head. And this is just a very little bit. A little bit of the head dubbed, put the um, thread at the eye there. I usually pinch back, you know, just right along the edges to keep make sure those materials are not creeping up on the eye there. And then we're going to pull this last little bit for the to look like the head on the top there. Stretch that one, two, three. Pick it up, make a couple wraps underneath it. Again, you can take the your fingers and kind of push it along those the eye, kind of squeeze it back, just make sure you get a nice. Um, so it's not creeping up. You're going to stretch that and you can cut that, trim that short. And the last step is to just do a series of half hitches. And hat off.